Hi, in this video we're going to go over bending impact loading. This is going to be example 7.2 on our lecture notes. So let's take a look at the figure. What we have is we have a beam that is suspended with two springs and then we have a mass over here of 50 kilograms that is going to be dropped on the beam from a height of 300 millimeters. Notice the place that that mass is going to impact the beam is right at the midpoint of the span of the beam. Over here they also tell us the cross section of the beam. It's rectangular with a base of 40 millimeters and a height of 80 millimeters. Now the examples read as follows. A 50 kilogram mass is dropped on the steel beam from a height of 300 millimeters. The steel beam is supported by two springs with a stiffness K equal to 70 kilonewtons per meter. Our job is going to be to estimate the maximum deflection and maximum bending stress in the beam. Now the general procedure you already know. First step is to calculate the static deflection. This is true regardless if we're working with linear or bending impact as we are in this case. So first we'll have to determine again the static deflection which is how much will the system deflect if we take that mass and we just put it to rest right at the point uh, that it impacts. Now once we have the static deflection we're going to go ahead and calculate the impact factor. Remember we got two formulas to pick from. One is going to depend on H over here, a drop height and the other formula is whenever they tell us a uh, velocity at which the object impacts. So in this example that we're doing today, we know the mass is being dropped from a height of 300 millimeters. So we're going to be using this top equation over here for the impact factor. Notice the only other thing that we need besides the height is the static deflection. And so that's why the static deflection is this first step in our problems. Now once we have the impact factor, we can now, uh, go ahead and calculate the maximum deflection and the equivalent force. And the formulas for those are super easy, right? That maximum deflection is just going to be the static deflection or this number that we calculate previously times the impact factor, which for this example is going to again come from the top formula. The equivalent force, remember what that means, right? When the object has that inertia and it strikes it strikes the beam in this case, the beam is going to feel a much higher load than, um, than what the force of the weight is on that object, right? So that's why we're multiplying by that impact factor. And so again, that equivalent force is just going to be the weight of that object multiplied times the impact factor. Now, we're looking... Um, for maximum deflection and for maximum stress, but this is going to be on a beam, right? So to calculate uh, those deflections, we're going to need to use those tables in, in the equation and reference booklet to calculate the stress, right? It's going to be a bending stress. So you know the general formula for a bending stress is the moment times y uh, divided by i. Usually we're looking for the maximum stress, so this is going to be at the outmost uh, fibers, and um, I is cross section of the beam, right? It's a property, and the M over here, right? That moment is going to be some function of this equivalent force, so some force multiplied times some, some distance and some other constant. So that's where this equivalent force is going to feed into this moment. Again, that moment is a function of that equivalent force. And we're going to put it in this equation to figure out the bending stress. All right, let's start solving this problem. Remember, the first step is going to be to calculate the static deflection because we use that number in the impact factor formula. So what are the things that are going to be deflecting in this problem? Well, first, when the object is going to strike the beam, the beam is going to deflect right sum. So... I mean, the problem is called bend, uh, bending impact, right? So 
there's a big clue that something's bending is going to be deflecting. So we need to figure out the static deflection of the beam. Now, the problem with this problem is that the beam is supported by some springs, right? When the mass hits the beam, it's going to push down on the beam, and then the beam is going to push down on the springs. So the springs themselves are also going to deflect by some amount, static deflection of the spring. And so again, what we have is the beam gives, the springs gives, and then this giving, right, this energy is being absorbed by the two structures. So actually the static deflection, the value that we use for calculating the impact factor is going to be the static deflection of the beam plus the static deflection of the spring. See, if we if I write here on the side of mechanical model of what we have, right, we have a mass that is striking two things, right? We're striking the beam and it behaves kind of like a spring, right? It's going to deflect. And then we have the spring supporting um, the beam itself. So when that object comes over here and it, and it strikes again, it's going to deflect not only a little bit of the spring plus also on the beam. I said that backwards, but you get it, the beam and then the spring. Alrighty, so how do we calculate the deflection of, of the beam? Well, let's take a look at the beam. What does it look like? We have something that looks like this. It is being supported by some springs, right? And on it, there's going to be some force. What force? Well, for right now, we're calculating the static deflection, right? So what is the static deflection? It is a deflection that we would get when we take this mass and we just lay it to rest right on top of the beam, right? So how much would that force be? Well, we know the mass is 50 kilograms, right? So we can calculate its weight by just taking mass times the gravity. With the mass being 50 kilograms and gravity being 9.81, we multiply the two and the number that we get would be in newtons, right? So if you multiply 50 times 9.81, you get 490.3 newtons. Okay, so that is, um, again, the weight of that object just resting on the beam. And now our job is going to be to determine what is the deflection of the beam based on this force. Well, when we look at it, remember a couple of lectures ago, this is just a simply supported beam with a load um, right at the center or at the midpoint. So if we look in the back of the equation booklets, we can figure out or we can um, read the equation for the maximum deflection of the beam. And it goes as follows. Delta is, um, let me put here static of beam. The deflection is going to be P times L cubed divided by 48 times E times I. What is P? Well, P is the weight of the object. We already said 490.3 newtons. What is L? L is the length of the beam. So in this case, we have two meters plus two meters, that is four meters. Now, anytime we're calculating deflections, deflection values are very small. So usually we want to do it in millimeters. So I'll just go ahead and write it as 4,000 millimeters. Now, don't forget that this number gets cubed. In the bottom, we have the constant 48. Next, we need, um, Elastic modulus of steel, it is not provided in this problem statement, but if we go on the equation booklet uh, to that um, page where we have the properties, um, you're going to see that steel, whether it's uh, low carbon steel or alloy steel, is going to be 207, oops, 207 gigapascals. I can write it in megapascals or 207,000 megapascals. And then remember that one megapascal is the same thing as one newton per millimeter squared. 
So I'll just go ahead and write it instead of one Newton per millimeter square. Next, we need the I, which is cross section, right? So the I over here about the neutral axis, again, if you don't remember, you can look in the back of the equation booklet. You see that the moment of inertia is going to be um, the base times the height cube divided by 12. So in this case, the base is 40 millimeters. The height is 80 millimeters. Remember, this gets cubed and then divided by 12. You plug that in the calculator, you should get a value for I of 1.707 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. So that's what we're going to put over here, 1.707 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. There we go. So we have the formula for the static deflection of the beam. We put in the values. And if we type it in correctly, last time I made a mistake. That's why I'm redoing this video. I made a mistake on another formula. But anyways, if you type it in correctly, supposedly it gives a deflection of the beam of 1.851 uh, millimeters. So there you go. We have the first term. We have the, the static deflection of the beam. Next, let's go ahead and calculate the static deflection of the spring. And this is where I made a mistake last time. I did mention that, okay, we have to figure out the deflection of the beam. I'm sorry, of the spring. For that, we can use the spring equation, right? Ks, right? The force of the spring is equal to the spring constant times the deflection, where s is the deflection of the beam. So s is deflection. It's just the force divided by the spring constant. What is the force of the spring? Well, if I have 490 pushing down, each of the spring is going to support just half of the weight. So we take one half times 490.3 newtons and then divide by the spring constant, which is 70 kilonewton per meter or 70,000 newton per meter. If we stick that in the calculator and then the convert to millimeters, we get that the deflection of the spring is 3.502 millimeters and this is where I made a mistake last time I said we need to take half of the weight um, of the object over here but when I typed it in my calculator I forgot to, to multiply times this one half so because this number was off and if you saw the video before reposting then everything else was gonna be off anyways so this here is the deflection of the spring, or I can call it like this, deflection, the static deflection of the spring. So we got the two numbers, the static deflection of the beam and the static deflection of the spring. If we add these two together, then we're going to get the static deflection, the total static deflection, which in this case is going to be um, 5 point three five three right one plus three is two five eight plus five thirteen carry one three four five yes I need to make sure this number is correct though and this is um total or static deflection total so this number right here the five point three five three is the number that's going to go into the impact factor formula. Now, do you remember what the impact factor formula is? We got two. Remember, one is in terms of V, velocity, and the other one's in terms of a drop height. We want to use the one in terms of the drop height. 
So it's going to be 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 2 times h divided by the static deflection. Right? So this is 1 plus square root of 1 plus 2 times. Remember, h over here, don't get it confused. It's not the height. I'm sorry. It's not going to be the height of this cross section. It's going to be the drop height. Okay? So just make sure you don't you confuse that. So here's the drop height, or the mass is being dropped from 300 millimeters high. Right? And then the static deflection was 5.353. Five three millimeters. So take a look at the units, the millimeters from top. It's gonna cancel from the millimeters at the bottom, and this impact factor, right, is gonna be unitless. It's just a factor. Well, if you type this in the calculator, we get that the impact factor now is eleven point six three four. This is the impact factor. Now you remember what the impact factor is or what it stands for, right? It's like a magnification. What this tells us is that um, due to the impact, that mass, right, that weight is going to feel about 11 times um, higher than what it usually weighs or what it weighs under without any impact loading. Wow. Hold on. All right, so now that we have the impact factor, we can go ahead and calculate um, the things that they're asking from us. The maximum deflection of the beam and the maximum bending stress on the beam. Let's do the maximum deflection first. Actually, I think I want to move this one. There we go go down so the maximum deflection of the beam it's real simple right it's just going to be the static deflection of the beam times the impact factor so in this case remember the static deflection was 1.851 so just 1.851 and we're going to multiply it times the impact factor which is 11.634 once you plug this one in the calculator we get a value of 21.53 millimeters again this is the max deflection of the beam so uh, let me just explain what that number means right we have the mass let me clean this up a little bit we have the mass and is striking the beam and spring the number that we just calculated is just this one how much does the beam deflect this is max of the beam and that is from the impact right if you wanted to figure out how much does for example this this point here gonna deflect downward right that's gonna be um that's gonna be the impact factor times the static deflection of the beam plus the static deflection of the springs okay so again if you wanted to figure out how much does that point go down right this would be or the maximum deflection right it depends on both the beam and the spring giving right so that number deflection of the beam plus the deflection of the spring is this guy. So if we take this number here, 5.353, and then multiply times the impact factor, 11.634, this is gonna give 11.634. 
um, like a max deflection but this is total from being M spring of 62.278 now the problem wanted the maximum of deflection of the beam right so this would be oops sorry this number here so they wanted the maximum deflection of the beam also they wanted the maximum stress on the beam so it's going to be the maximum bending stress so let me go ahead and scroll down so how much is that beam going to deflect well let's take a look at it again right we have a beam it's being supported at the two ends and there's an object striking it in the middle right we know that the object right is delivering this energy and we can calculate the equivalent static force that the beam is going to feel from the impact do you remember how to calculate that one that one is just the weight of the object times the impact factor okay so in this case the weight was 490.3 newtons and the impact factor was I forgot 11 11.634 so we multiply those two together we get an equivalent force of 5,704.7 newtons so that's what that weight feels like from the impact loading what we want to calculate is the maximum bending stress do you remember how do we calculate the maximum bending stress there's a couple ways to do it but the method that we reviewed is where we draw the shear diagram right and then the moment so that we can figure out the maximum moment and then that value we can put it into the equation m y by i right the bend, beam bending equation alrighty so what do we have over here let's go ahead and start with the shear diagram so what is the shear we're going to look at it and we see right at this point over here right if f e is acting down what's going to be this guy right this guy is going to be half f e by two and so is this other support so we're going to start by going up an amount of f e by two up until we reach this point when we're in this point here right we're going to drop an amount of f and we stay there until we get to the other support which is going to bring it up an amount of fe by 2 right so this is plus fe by 2 this is minus fe by 2 so that's the shear next we need the moment right because we want the maximum moment what is the moment going to do in this case well i we have a positive area and a negative right so i know i need to increase with a constant slope to some point and then it's going to decrease what is the value of this point well it's going to be equal to this area over here what is that area well that area is going to be that area is going to be fe by 2 right multiply times the length right so what is the length if the whole thing is l then this guy is l by 2 so this gets multiplied times l by 2 because that's the area of that rectangle right which gives me a formula of f e l by 4 right so what was f e f e was or the equivalent force was 5704.7 newtons that value came from 
from here. The length is going to be four meters. And then this gets divided by four. So actually the force cancels. And we have that the maximum bending moment is just 5,704.7, right? What are the units? Newton meter. So let's go ahead and put it in this equation. 5,704.7. This is Newton times meter. Next is going to be multiply times y. What is the y? Remember the cross section of the beam was 40 by 80 millimeters. This is being simple rectangular cross section, right? Y is the distance to the outermost fibers or the fibers on the surface, which is going to be the ones that carry the highest stress. So Y in this case is going to be 40 millimeters and i is the mass uh, moment of inertia that we had calculated prior so notice here the y has units of millimeters so i, I want to go ahead and put everything in units of millimeters so to convert a meter to a millimeter right we're going to multiply times a thousand that way we get rid of this meters and now we have millimeters so that's our bending M. Y is going to be 40. And I was 1.707 times 10 to the 6. Let me verify real quick. Times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. Alrighty, so what do we have? Um, we plug everything into the calculator and the number that we get is 133.7. What are the units? Well, I have on top, I have Newton, right? What else I have? Well, I have millimeter times millimeter or millimeter square up on top. And then on the bottom, I have millimeters to the fourth, right? So two are going to cancel. And what we're going to have is Newton per millimeter square, which is the same thing as a megapascal, right? So this is megapascals. That's so this would be the maximum bending moment on the beam. Mixing, max, sorry, maximum bending stress on the beam, not the bending moment. That's the maximum bending stress, right? Because we already put the maximum bending moment. So just to keep a um, uh, recap, we calculated the maximum deflection of the beam. And that number was 21.53 millimeters and we also calculated the maximum bending stress on the beam and that value was 133.7 megapascals now the example is over but I always like to go a little step further um, and just kind of reflect on what's going on in this case, the question I want to ask is, so what would happen if the springs were removed, right? If instead the beam was uh, supported by rigid supports. So don't get it confused. I'm not saying if the beam was fixed at the ends. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is let's say the beam is maybe pinned at one end and there's a roller support at the other, right? In those cases, the pin or the roller, if we assume that they don't give or absorb any energy, what would happen? All righty, so we removed the springs and now we have say two rollers and we want to again figure out what is the maximum deflection of the beam and what is the maximum stress of the beam. Well, in this case, 
when the mass strikes the beam the beam is the only thing that's going to be deflecting right so we would still need need to calculate the deflection i deflection of the beam and this is static right so static deflection of the beam so nothing really changes here the mass is still 50 all right so we still have the weight of this guy equal to 490.3 uh, newtons and if we stick it into the beam bending equation remember uh, this one is p l q by 48 ei we cal calculated that quantity before um, and that quantity was 1.851 millimeters right but now what's going to change is when we actually calculate the impact factor remember the formula one plus square root of one plus two times h divided by the static deflection where before the static deflection was um, the combination right or the addition of the beam plus the springs in this case now we just have the beams so our new impact factor is going to be 1 plus square root of 1 plus 2 times 300 millimeters divided by 1.851 millimeters. Okay, millimeters cancels with millimeters and the new impact factor in this case is going to be 19.03. And so look at the difference when we had um, when we had the spring and the beam absorbing energy that impact factor the previous one was 11 point something now that we took away the springs and they're not absorbing the energy right all the energy is going to be have to be absorbed by the beam so it's going to feel like a heavier load on it right so now that impact factor is 19.03 or 19 times, right? So if we want to uh, calculate the maximum deflection of the beam, this is going to be the deflection of the beam, the static times the impact factor. Well, the static deflection of the beam is 1.851 millimeters and our new impact factor is 19.03 uh, when we plug this into the <coughs> into the calculator we get now um, maximum deflection of the beam of uh, it's an ugly number 35 point two two four millimeters so compare this number at 35.2 uh, millimeters to the previous value, which was 21, right? So much higher deflections. Um, to calculate the stress, um, it's, again, it's the same formula. It's going to be the bending stress, my by i, right? And remember, the bending moment, maximum bending moment was um, the force, Fe times L divided by 4 right so now we have to calculate our new equivalent force so the equivalent force is just the weight of the object times the impact factor which is 490.3 times 19.03 that new equivalent force is 9332.3 nine newtons so compare this equivalent force with the previous one in the previous case that equivalent force was 5700 now we're up to 9300 and some again this is from removing the springs um, so when we use this value into this formula right we're gonna have 9332.9 times the distance which is going to be 4000 milli millimeters um, 
this is going to get divided by 4 and again all of this quantity this is just m over here so all of this is just m the y value is still uh, 40 millimeters and then divided by 1.707 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th I'm forgetting one unit here this has units of newtons so if you plug it in the calculator we get a value of 218.7 megapascal so this is the bending stress on the beam from removing the springs And I want to remind you from the previous example when we had springs absorbing, the stress on that beam was only 133.7 megapascal. So compare with springs and without the springs. I also want to point the fact that, again, when we're designing for impact loading, we're not designing um, for stresses. What we're designing for is energy absorption. Hopefully you saw uh, how important it was here to include those springs. And again, those springs help uh, absorb that energy. Um, remember when we're calculating the impact factor, right? It's a matter of, or it's a function of the static deflection. Um, static deflection over here. Let me change the color blue. The static deflection. This number over here. If we can aim increase the static deflection which means how much the material gives or absorbs we're gonna end up with impact factors that are gonna be smaller when we decrease the static deflection like it was in this case right we went um, in this case the static deflection is only from the beam we're gonna get higher impact factors right so the more structure you have to absorb the higher the static deflections right the lower the impact factors that's one thing. And then number two is, no, you don't have to use a spring every single time. Um, in the real life, instead of springs, what we can do is instead of a spring, we can add some um, maybe like a solid pieces of rubber, right? They have some very low stiffness. Or we can use materials that are um, <clears throat> made of lower elastic modulus. Again, what you want to do is increase the compliance increase the give of the system so that you can absorb that energy without um, causing the stresses to increase. So hopefully you enjoyed the example. If you have any questions or if you picked up on any mistakes, do let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next one.